Imagine going to bed tonight and having to lock your bedroom door out of fear. Fear that you might be attacked in your sleep by your own child. Tonight, we're going to take you to a world few people have ever seen, where children battle invisible phantoms that command them to be violent against the families who love them. Jay Shadler has their story. Happy Somewhere on their way through childhood, a tiny number of children miss their connection, or maybe make too many connections. For reasons still largely a mystery, their happy song turns into a scream. <laughs> and imaginary friends melt into hallucinations. What are you seeing right now, Jenny? I see 24 hours. Jenny Schofield is on that strange journey right now. So are some of the other girls here at Jannie's summer pool party. Make your wish. Wish. Uh, no. to celebrate her seventh birthday. But if Jannie's parents could make a wish. Not even an hour old yet. But much of the last seven years would have turned out so differently. Who's the fairy princess? We've received an incredible gift. We have. In the beginning, Michael and Susan Schofield remember a beautiful but baffling baby. She never slept. She was up every 20 to 30 minutes round the clock. This is what we go through every night. When she was up, she, she'd scream all the mm -hmm. time. And we would run down the list, you know, is she hungry? No. Held? No, that's not working. The pediatrician would say, some babies are active, some are passive. Yours is very, very active. Here's Jenny playing. Of course, like most first-time parents, Susan and Michael were always wondering where normal behavior veers toward something more peculiar. You see something? And Jenny was just following something on the ceiling that was moving round and round and round. But in hindsight, even the earliest home videos seem to harbor something much darker. And this is the second time that we've noticed her really intent on, on something. What is it that you see? Something mommy and daddy can't see, huh? So look at that. She's really intent on something. I know. Pretty. <laughs> By three years old, Jannie's invisible companions began to take center stage. And everybody would say, she's just got a really big imagination. Don't worry about well, this, you know. Most kids just have one or two imaginary right. friends. She, you know, they kept growing, mm -hmm. in, you know, from Numbers one to two to and three. Animals. 73 sleeping and, and 72 is in the bath. Soon, Janny's mind was populated with literally dozens upon dozens of characters with names like 400 the cat. 400 is trying to jump the sun lower so it'll be hotter. And Wednesday, the rat. Wednesday wants to show you her, her famous clip. Go, Wednesday. I told her I to do her famous flip. Yeah, because she was in a rat show. Where's Wednesday now? Oh, she's sleeping. Sleeping? What made you think these were not just regular imaginary childhood friends? It became clear that that she wasn't controlling them, that, that they were in, in control of her. If she didn't do what they wanted to do, they would scratch her or for under her. or bite her. Ow! You okay? What was that? Did something just hurt you, honey? I think it was Wednesday. Wednesday just hurt you a little bit? What did Wednesday do? She hit me. And she says she feels it in, in her brain. She will feel mm -hmm. them biting her or scratching her in, in her head. In 2007, Susan gave birth to their second child, Bodhi, named for the tree where legend says Buddha gained enlightenment. But for the Schofields, only cruel bewilderment was growing. Jenny was now five. And Bodhi, the new baby, did not fit into her world. Janny, Bodhi's right here. Hit him. No, don't hit him. She would say things like, 400 the cat is telling me to hit Bodhi. Was she threatening Bodhi? Whenever Bodhi would cry, she would scream at him. I mean, she would hit him, she would try to kick him. Uh... Hate him. If Bodhi came home here, would that be OK? No. No. What would you do? Hit him. You would? Do you think that she would? Yeah, no, she definitely would. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And she does, every chance she gets. 
In April 2009, after years of therapy and psychological evaluations, Janny was officially diagnosed as schizophrenic. No, 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 no. To keep Bodie safe, Michael and Susan took the extraordinary and costly step of living in two apartments just across the parking lot from each other. They take turns caring for the separated children. You want an otter pop? Forcing Michael to take a leave of absence from his teaching job at California State University. It's right there! You know what? Stop yelling at me. I tried, all right? Not surprisingly, you're just perfection. The stress is taking its toll. Why are you attacking me? <laughs> Which makes peaceful moments like these, Jenny's pool party, so precious few minutes of calm for children and families swimming through the most troubling of waters. When they're together, you never know. And yet, you know, we all go back to our individual homes and everything falls apart again. Take Janny's friend, nine-year-old Rebecca Stancil, diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Her mother, Cinnamon, remembers bringing her to the hospital two years ago. One of the saddest things I've ever had to do. To quell the visions and voices in her head, Rebecca tried to kill herself, using a hair clip to slit her wrists. Picture you're bringing your daughter there saying, my daughter wants to kill herself. I'm in tears, and I can't believe I'm really doing this, like basically She's... handing her over to them. It's almost like you have to grieve that, you know, the, all the thoughts that you had of your kid are gone. Rebecca has been in and out of hospitals nine times. Insurance money and clinic rules dictate that her emergency visits eventually come to an end. I'm hoping that she will be stabilized a little bit longer than she normally is. I'm hoping um, she's on a new med. We're on Thorazine now. And so today, treated with antipsychotics, Rebecca is coming home again. Dinner is barbecue ribs, strawberry lemonade, and Thorazine. Tell me how you feel me out of the hospital. Well, I'm right happy now. to see that you're home. How do you feel? I feel okay, but not perfect. What is it like to be you? I hate being back up. I hate it. I hate because I hate my life. I hate people. I hate them. And what she hates most is that no one else can truly understand. What don't people understand? About my issues. They just think, oh, it's, a, it's not even a big deal. Yes, it is. Love thing in your mind. The things haunting Rebecca's mind are distinctly different than those troubling, say, her friend Janny Schofield, who she met at the UCLA psych ward. Janny has got childhood schizophrenia. I have paranoia. But paranoid is when you think something's going to happen, but it's really not. So does she see different kinds of characters than you do? Yeah, she sees, like, rats and pets, like dogs. Huh. And you? No. Not so much, huh? People. Yeah, but I only talk, I only see the man. Hi. Yeah, bye. This is me and the man. This is our phone. He has his own phone. The man is six foot seven and can be friend or foe. Does he follow you out of this room? Yeah, he follows me everywhere. Everywhere. I just feel like he's somebody's watching me. <laughs> and sometimes he does more than just watch. She sees him and he's putting a gun to her head. And she got to the point that she wanted to run away and run on the freeway to get hit by a car to stop the man from coming. Not even 10 years old, and it is a diabolical world. I just can kill everybody, and I can add the whole world to my stuff.